Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Today is Saturday, January the 26th, 2019. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk boxing. I'll talk about some non-heavyweights, then let's segue into heavyweights. Right, let me just say this. You know, styles make fights. In boxing, more than other sports, although it applies to other sports, I don't believe you can think in terms of who's the absolute best and then the rest of the division. Because the bottom line is, even the absolute best is going to have matchups, certain styles that give them trouble. So take, for example, Ray Leonard, right? An argument can be made that his best victory ever was his victory over a then unbeaten Thomas the Hitman Hearns. But I want people to go back to that first Leonard Hearns fight. Understand at the time of the stoppage, the judges had Thomas Hearns ahead in that fight. In other words, Hearns was actually fighting a style that gave Ray Leonard problems, right? Hearns, who gets hit in the midsection in the middle of that fight and is not himself, gets on his toes, starts operating behind a jab, starts moving. Right? This is the hitman, the KO artist. He starts moving away from Ray Leonard. He starts doubling and tripling up the jab. Right? Understand, Thomas the Hitman Hearns was this close to beating Ray Leonard by decision. Think about how unlikely that would have been. Well, understand, when the guys fought in the rematch, Hitman drops Ray Leonard twice. Now look, here on this site, we try to deal with reality, not fantasy. Right? The judges somehow call that rematch a draw. <laughs> I believe Ray Leonard himself today knows that he lost that rematch. In other words, but for the stoppage in the first fight. Ray Leonard had his hands completely full with Thomas Hearns' style, right? I'm not sure if anybody else stylistically gave Ray Leonard as hard a time as Thomas Hearns, style-wise. So, let's turn to the heavyweight division, right? Lennox Lewis, who himself had a problem with Ray Mercer. Right? You're watching the fight, you realize, wow, Lewis is having a problem neutralizing these parts of Ray Mercer. Right? Lennox Lewis, great champion. Great champion. Lennox Lewis has openly said, much to Eddie Hearn's chagrin, that Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, and Anthony Joshua, Hearn's fighter, need to fight each other to figure out who's the best at heavyweight, right? Well, all I'm saying here, and I believe, by the way, Tyson Fury is the best out of those three. But I believe that there are other people in the mix who on a given fight night could give some, if not all, of those three problems at heavyweight, right? The wild card in all this at heavyweight, and I'm not talking about actual accomplishments, I'm just talking fight styles, right? Like many of you, I'm just a gambler hoping certain fights gets announced because I feel I have an edge on the casino. Alexander Usyk might simply be too fluid and too fast for the three guys who are all above 6'5", that I've just named, right? Usyk is a guy who can get on his back foot. 
If he fights the fight he fought against Murat Gassiev, revisit that fight. Tell me which of these three guys, Fury Wilder or Joshua, beats him. Right? But there's a problem. Usyk isn't exactly Ali. He's not 22 years old. He's not a young guy with great reflexes who has incredible stamina because he's in his early 20s. No, Usyk's in his 30s. Right? So you're watching Usyk and you realize with the three guys I've mentioned, there isn't a lot of margin for error. Right? Unless he fights the perfect fight. One slip up, and Wilder or Joshua could drop him. Right? Unless he fights the perfect fight, Tyson Fury's reach could become a problem. There's also part of Tyson Fury's game we haven't seen recently that exists. It's Fury on the inside. I actually agree with Freddie Roach. Had Fury's corner been a little bit bolder, Fury could have stopped. Deontay Wilder. What happens if Usyk gets a little tired and Fury decides I'm going to come inside like I did against Steve Cunningham? Look up that fight. What if Fury comes inside and starts leaning on him, using elbows, fighting Roberto Duran style? Would the smaller Usyk be able to stay on the move, to stay away from that situation? Well, understand, the heavyweight division is bigger than that. There are people out there we haven't discussed that much who linger. I've said here online for years, but I'm about to say here, the fastest hands in the heavyweight division belong to Andy Ruiz. Right? What happens if Ruiz, who's bigger than you think, gets inside on someone who isn't blessed in the pocket, someone like Deontay Wilder, and then starts to unload on him. Right? I'm just telling you, Ruiz is blessed with quick hands. Let's talk about Dylan White for a second. You know, Dylan White in the pocket is a problem. What happens if Dylan White gets in the pocket on Deontay Wilder? What happens if they give Dylan White the rematch against Joshua? Folks, I'm telling you, if you want to see Joshua tested, revisit the first round of that Dylan White-Joshua fight. White's shoulder goes out during that round. The rest of the fight isn't the same. What happens if White's shoulder doesn't go out? I'm telling you, style-wise, White's a tough matchup for Anthony Joshua, right? I am one of those who believes Tyson Fury goes through White. Again, styles make fights. Now, for heavyweight division watchers, you have a very important fight that's taking place between Adam Konaki, a name you need to underline, and Gerald Washington, right? The fight likely is unbettable because the gamblers have sniffed this out. Konaki is the favorite, as I believe he should be. I'm expecting Konaki to win the fight. But what's important here is his fight style, right, folks? It's unique at heavyweight. Just imagine, I'm fighting you, and you're bigger than I am, right? You look better than I do, right? Your body's chiseled. Mine has some body fat on it. Let's say you have the bigger punch. You're a guy who can come up with an uppercut, hurt a former heavyweight champion, like Anthony Joshua hurt Vladimir Klitschko, right? You can drop an overhand right and go from zero to 60, knock me down in a fight in which I've been outboxing you, like Deontay Wilder did to Tyson Fury, right? You have the bigger punch. 
you have the bigger size. Right? But let's say my game is nuanced. Let's say I can play angles. Right? And let's say that I can fight off a sequence. This is how combination punchers think. So let's say I come in at an angle and I know you can't hit me with your dominant hand from that angle. Right? So let's say you throw your non-dominant hand and I slip that. Now what if after I slip your non-dominant hand, I then start throwing power shots and I figure, you know, I'm going to land my first power shot then I'm going to come back with a second power shot because this guy won't be able to reset to get off his dominant hand. I'm going to continue throwing power shots. I'll even trade. I'll even get hit with some of my bigger opponent's shots because I believe my power shots after I collapse the pocket are going to leave this guy defenseless. If he hits me with his non-dominant hand, I'm prepared to take that shot. So I can continue to land my power shots. I'll have his power hand smothered. Right? For a great example of what I'm talking about, guys who live off the sequence. In other words, this is different than Mayweather. Mayweather is a pot shotter where he's with you and he's setting up an opportunity to throw an unblocked left hook or an unblocked straight right hand. Right? Pot shotters are setting up signature punches. What if I'm a combination puncher? And what I'm trying to do here is to just throw down a sequence. In other words, I get in, I slip your first shot, or I faint you out of your first shot. And then I feel that I have your door ajar. So I'm going to stay deep in the pocket. And I'm going to throw down a two-handed attack. I'm not trying to get the one big punch. I'm trying to collapse you with punches with both hands. Right, folks? Adam Konacki is that rare combination punching heavyweight. He's sequential. Right? Think Chris Eubank, Avni Yildura. I want you to revisit that fight. You're going to notice Eubank is looking at Yildura, right? Then he makes a decision on when to trade with Yildura, who's too deep inside the pocket. And he's willing to have Yildura land punches on him, because Eubank has figured out that he's in a position to land the bigger shots. That's Adam Konacki. He looks slow. He looks out of shape. Both are wrong. Right? While he looks slow, he doesn't throw punches with that big of an arc. Right? The shorter angle makes the punches land faster. Understand he's looking to collapse the pocket. He has an excellent jab, as does Gerald Washington. Both guys have good jabs. Don't get fooled by the jab. What he really wants to do is to figure out your punch pattern. Then he wants to catch you when you're unprepared. When you don't have the room to throw your Sunday punch. Then he wants to start a sequence. He's willing to trade with you because he knows when he collapses the pocket and he starts throwing five and six punch sequences. You won't have an answer for him. Understand, this is a big guy who isn't trying to hit and run. 
No, he's trying to hit and stay. Right? This is how combination punchers think. So he's in against a better athlete. Washington's going to be faster. Washington is going to move better than him. Right? What you should do, though, is pay close attention to how Kanaki, in my opinion, collapses the pocket. I'm expecting Konaki to win this fight, me and the gamblers out there who have him as the favorite. More importantly, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a stoppage. Because understand, he gets bigger guys on their back foot. And it's then that the guy he's fighting understands he doesn't have room to operate. Also, because Konaki is throwing short punches with both hands, by the time he starts unloading, it's very hard for his opponent to clinch him. Right? Clinching is a big part of the game. I believe the only way to survive when Konaki collapses the pocket is to hold on to him. It's hard to do because Konaki is very accurate and his hand speed is faster than it looks on film. Now if I'm right about this guy and he's unbeaten folks destroyed Arthur Spielka. I want you to see how he has Spielka up on the ropes. Just look at that fight here online. Let me point out too that some outfits, premier boxing champions, are putting full fights on YouTube. Let me thank them for that. So the boxing community can actually go back and look at the full fight. The official film Right? You don't have to deal with bootleg films <laughs> with, let's say, um, you know, audio that's in a foreign language. You can actually look at the PBC telecasts. And I want you to notice how Spielka, who's normally an aggressive fighter, is up on the ropes. How he's exposed. How Konaki is aggressively daring him to trade punches. Understand, when you back up a pot shotter, a guy who's accustomed to just setting up a left hook or a straight right hand, and you force him to trade a lot of punches, many pot shotters won't know what to do. As I've said, Floyd Mayweather has said in interviews, one of the hardest fights he had was against Emmanuel Augustus because guys like this run red lights, right? They're up on your face, they're throwing combinations. They're saying, hey, I'm here, I'm willing to trade. They're accurate, you can't quite grab them. Kanaki plays the angles, so he has your dominant hand smothered. Right? This guy is a combination puncher who's a technician. His nickname is Babyface. Don't get fooled by the appearance. Right? Just like you have Tyson Fury calling Deontay Wilder a basketball player. And yet Wilder, as thin as he is, uh, as thin as he is might have the biggest punch at heavyweight. Right, Thomas Hearns looked like a tall, thin guy. Had the biggest punch. Had the biggest punch at welterweight. Right, just ask Pimpino Cuevas. My point to you is this guy, babyface, who looks slow, who looks young, right, who looks like he isn't a weightlifter. Right? This guy is a technician who's trying to get you up on the ropes so he can start wailing on you with two hands. Right? He has the card game thought out. You can't clinch him. If Konaki wins this fight, I got to tell you, this fight style is going to give a lot of guys... Wilder, Joshua, 
Dylan White. It's going to give a lot of guys a lot of problems in the heavyweight division. Let me say, too, that he benefits from the visual. Because you're going to notice in this fight, Washington's the bigger guy. Right? He moves better than Konaki. So you're going to have the visual of a shorter guy. And it matters. Right? Judges are involved. You're going to have the visual of a shorter guy hunting down the bigger guy. Trying to corner the bigger guy. Right? The visual alone is going to get Konaki some rounds. So keep an eye on this heavyweight. The fight might be unbettable because of the line. You're not getting a lot of value. I'm really laying this out for boxing fans, right? You need to know who the players are before the fights where you get value are announced. Adam Konaki is serious, right? This is a guy fighting out of New York City who's been in some gyms who's fought some tough opponents, guys just a little outside of the public consciousness, right? He destroys Arthur Spielka, destroys him, right? I'm just telling you, if he beats Gerald Washington, you need to circle his name because I'm guessing if he fights the bigger names at heavyweight right now, you're going to get substantial odds on him. And I'm just saying, in terms of angles, having a fight style, knowing how to win slow rounds, having a style that appeals to the judges, right? And having the ability to collapse the pocket and to start sequences where he has the upper hand and where he hurts opponents. Understand, he's not trying to win by decision, folks. He's trying to win by stoppage. This guy is better than he looks on film. I know that sounds crazy. But you need to judge guys on film by how off their opponents look. His fight style is distinctive. I'm picking him to beat Gerald Washington. I'm expecting him to do so in a way where there's no doubt, right? Let's remember, Gerald Washington fights Deontay Wilder, in my opinion, is ahead on the scorecards. I know the judges in Wilder fights never see it this way, but in my opinion, he's ahead on the judges' scorecards. He's throwing down a great performance against Deontay Wilder when he gets caught. And let me just say, I thought even the stoppage was a bit ridiculous in that fight. Right? It's a heavyweight title fight. Guys are going to get hit hard. They're going to get dazed and confused momentarily. Right? So Konaki's fighting a guy who has fought for the heavyweight title. Let's see if he looks better against Washington than currently reigning heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder did. I think he's going to. I don't think Konaki's going to give away rounds like Wilder did, in my opinion. So keep an eye on this guy. Unique style, combination puncher, two-handed, at heavyweight. He wants to crash the pocket. He wants to start a combination. He wants you to be up on the ropes with nowhere to go, right? I believe this fight style would give Wilder and Joshua fits. That's how I see it at the beginning of the first round. If you're seeing him for the first time, you're going to think to yourself, the wire's got to be kidding here. I'm guessing by the start of the fourth round, you're going to understand appearances are deceiving. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Given the odds, the fight might be unbettable. But you need to Watch this fight for research purposes. It's an important fight at heavyweight. Thanks for stopping by.